Well, just a few minutes away from kick, moments rather, from kickoff. Here we go. Syracuse and Florida State, the Seminoles at 6-0, and the Orange at 2-6-1. and Annie, this Syracuse team has a tall task, like we've said, in staying in this game. The Orange are playing a little banged up, don't have as much depth as this Florida State team. Yes, there's only 14 or 15 players that suited up tonight due to some unexpected departures and injuries, one of them being in Zoe van de Kloot, who's actually playing with her national team in Belgium right now until Monday. On the Florida State side, also a couple losses to national teams. Jody Brown, the forward, she's playing with Jamaica. And Maria Alagoa, the midfielder, she's with Team Portugal. And Jody Brown was one of those players that Nikki Adams was worried about. There's Jordan Dudley, tries to get a cross off into the middle. Shea Vanderbosch is right there. Well, let's say that one rolled out of bounds. This Florida State team is led by Brian Penske in his second season. Started at Maryland, then went to Tennessee, and now back in the ACC with Florida State. He's picking off, picking up right where the, this great program has left off. Yeah, and he told us that every time he looks out his window, he's staring at three college or three national championship banners, and it's a tall standard to follow. That's Taylor Huff taking the corner. Junior out of Mansfield, Ohio. She followed what? Penske from Tennessee. Tosses it in, the header is blocked. Nice job by the Syracuse defense to keep that one out. Vanderbosch couldn't get her hands on it. Now they'll look to clear. FSU is right there. Puff's got it again. Echeghini now the leading scorer over to Dudley. Whistle on the field, Syracuse takes over. And that's an offsides there, and with Syracuse's four in the back line, they did a great job there in holding it high enough to make sure Florida State's not getting those through balls. The Orange have lost four out of the last five. Nikki Adams Please leading up. the way for this squad in her fifth season. Took over in 2019. Right it's been rough for her. She's had a, a lot of obstacles in her path with COVID, with just getting her recruiting classes finally in. It's, it's tough recruiting up in Central New York. And she was excited for this year's class, and last year's was her very first recruiting class that was able to show through. But she was excited. Well, Syracuse has a chance, and they'll slot this one. Liesel Auden sends it in. The Orange go up 1-0. And here's a look at that 4-4-2 going on really well so far. Liesel Auden, only 5'2", the junior out of Oregon, Wisconsin, makes her mark today against Florida State. Puts the Orange up 1-0 just two and a half minutes in. Liesel Auden doing exactly what you're supposed to do as a forward in following that ball making sure to add that pressure to the last defender and the keeper and make sure that you're there when any mistakes are happen. And she really stepped in and really took that shot like she needed to. Now, Annie, Syracuse was in a very similar situation to this against Miami. The Orange were the team with the own goal after a miscommunication in front of the net. This time it's the Seminoles. And Auden really forcing that play there and making that run. And when you have two attackers, you have Hannah Pilly and you have Auden there. One of them's got to make that run and follow up, and she just did that. Just some miscommunication by Christina Roque, the goalie, and Heather Gilchrist, the defender. Left the ball in front for Liesel Auden, getting the starting nod today. Only her second start of the season. She takes advantage of a great chance. Orange up 1-0, looking to clear it again. Now, SU is set to face a lot of pressure from this FSU offense, Andy. They have a lot of players up front that can keep possession and just push right to the net. And with that 4-4-2, you need to make sure you're not staying so flat-footed and allowing those through balls to happen. Now, Chagini plays it into the middle. Now, Nesbeth to the outside. They'll play it back plenty of times, too. Andy, this team controls possession a lot. Oftentimes, it has to do with the back line as well. And in using that back line, it's necessary to have a strong possession. Huff plays one forward, the chance wide right. Almost a shot at the net for Beata Olsen, just wide to the right. Vanderbosch made a good play here in reading that through ball, not waiting to see if they're gonna make an offsides call or not, but making it that run up to the forward when she has that ball. FSU with its second cross of the day, corner rather. There's Taylor Huff. Plays it into the middle, headed away. 
Now you'd have to think the Orange didn't necessarily expect to be in this situation up one nothing early. Again, Florida State pressuring. Blocked by the Orange again. We'll play this one out. Something Syracuse is really going to need to look out for is when they clear those balls out, making sure everyone is pressing up. Whether you're leaving Florida State players off sides or not, you've got to push up and make those transitions as soon as possible. FSU certainly does a great job of controlling in the midfield. As the Seminoles play it forward, that rolls out of bounds. And SU goal kick coming up. That's something Nikki Thrasher Adams definitely emphasized this week that the Seminoles want the ball and they want to keep it the whole time. Yeah, and because their possession is so great, they definitely like to play those sequence passes and on the ground, but they're also so good at finding those through balls and those balls from not only from the middle out to the wing, but also to the wing into the middle. In her second season starting for the Orange, Shea Vanderbosch, she's really been a cornerstone of these, this team this, these past couple of years, only a sophomore, but she's got a lot resting on her shoulders and she's really stepped up. And following up a year as a freshman where you lead the ACC in a save percentage is not an easy thing to do with all that pressure and all that expectation you have on your shoulders, but she's really great at communicating with her team and that's even one thing that Coach Brian Penske said his goalie needs to do better on in making those loud calls and not just soft-spoken calls. He did mention Roque was definitely a leader of this team on the field, but she's a quiet person, which you don't often see from a goalie. Ball out of bounds, a throw in coming in favor of the Seminoles. He'll play it in front, the pass. An open shot deflected by Vanderbosch. Back outside. Chagini now controlling, plays it to the far side. Dudley controlling in the midfield. Now, for this set that Florida State runs, the 4-3-3, it seems awfully fitting that, you know, they have the personnel out there with all the talent and control. They're not going to necessarily blow you away with speed and strength, but very tactical. Dudley makes a move in front, plays it to EY. Looking for space, a pass is deflected. And Florida State scores. The Seminoles tie it up, that's Beata Olsen. The senior out of Sweden gets her third goal of the season. And this is a great example of Florida State okay, making okay. that those impressive runs and looking to make those plays that Syracuse's defense would not be expecting. You have Beata Olsen coming in from a run. You had that run out on the wide to start it up, even. Last time out, Florida State took down Clemson 4-2. A comeback victory where Beata Olsen had that game-winning goal. She put number three on the board for the Orange, or for the Seminoles, rather. Today, she ties it up, 1-1. Olsen was one of those players that Coach Penske had noted in holding a leadership role out on the field. She comes from Sweden, and she leads from the front, which is what every team needs. Huff plays it forward to Olsen again. Now into the middle. Vanderbosch is right there. Now the sophomore is in a little bit of a peculiar situation. Like you mentioned, Danny, she led the ACC in save percentage last season. This year, she leads the conference in saves, but also goals allowed. Just way too much pressure on her. There's too much of a plus and then a negative there in this situation. And that also comes from having to have the offensive lineup and the whole lineup in general switch up too much and switch the positions and the formations because she's, as a keeper, knowing the back of the lineup so well, she's going to have to lead those communications. Vander Bosch has had a rotating cast of characters in front of her on the Syracuse back line. It's been a lot of Kylan Grant. She started every game. Kate Murphy has started all but the last one where she was out with a red card. Grace Gillard as well, but that other spot has been circulating between midfielders and some other players that have been forced to be out of position. This SU team dealing with a lot of injuries. Nikki Thrasher Adams said She's only going to suit up about 14 or 15 players. That's something no college team should really ever have to do. And a huge presence that's okay. missing on this Syracuse squad well, is Emma Klein down. playing in the midfield. She's a huge presence yeah. in that midfield and creating plas There's no passes here. and defending really well. Gelly, you got to keep her negative. Throw in for the orange. Headed away. Good. 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 
Arizona State looks to push it forward. Dudley moves ahead, full head of steam. Flurry right on her tail. A pass into the middle. Olsen's right there, it's knocked away. Now FSU can have those chances, but they're smart enough to pull it back and control possession. And that was just a brief look at Dudley and FSU's speed on this field in playing the ball long, but getting around the Syracuse defender and really going to goal with the speed. This FSU team has been so hard to stop this season. Only allowing four goals, but the offense has been great too. Scored four against number eight Clemson last time out. Get across, Lizo! You got time, you got time. You got time. What? Roush plays it back to Lawher. Kendall Lawher is one of those players that Coach Adams talked about that has had to move back and forth between the midfield and the defense. Same with Alyssa Abramson as well. That one's knocked out of bounds, and SU throwing coming up. Warren Flynn tapped that one outside of the sideline. Senior out of Arlington, Virginia. The defender has national experience. She's played for the U23 U.S. Women's National Team. Like we mentioned earlier, earlier this Seminoles team is without Jody Brown. She's playing with Jamaica right now. Maria Alagoa as well for Portugal. The Syracuse side, Zoe Van de Kloot. She's playing with Belgium at the moment. Uh, that's a big loss, Andy, for the Syracuse defense that has struggled. And when you lose players like that just in the middle of the season for a few days at a time, she's not coming back until Monday, it shifts up the chemistry in the midfield, especially in how does this player come in and make a difference, or how what are you losing when one player leaves? Now, one might say that with a group that Syracuse has right now, you know that they're going to have the same players out there almost every game. Do you think that helps to build chemistry? Definitely, when you have all those players that have played together for so many games at a time and for so long, you know what foot they're gonna go to, what turn they're gonna make, and what they're gonna do with the ball because you are just so familiar with their vision of the field. All tied up, Syracuse scored the first one of the day. Liesl Auden with her first career goal. Got the starting nod playing in the forward position. Something that Nikki Thrasher Adams didn't necessarily expect. And to get a goal against Christina Roque is incredible. She, for four years, has played in net, started almost every single game since then. And in four years, she's only lost two games as a keeper. She's been incredible. She's a national champion back in 2021. Third team All-American last year. The ACC goalkeeper of the year. One of those players on this Florida State squad that they've had for a few years now and Coach Penske can certainly rely on her no matter who they're playing. He did say though that he does want her to have a louder voice on the field. I mean, with everything that she does so well in her keeper statistics and her keeper agility, communication is an incredible and important part of the game. The Orange had that one away. Seminoles throw in coming up. Roque been a staple of this team. The senior out of Winter Garden, Florida. There's three shutouts already this season. Florida State's only allowed four goals. Seminoles looking to put pressure on through the midfield. Now this is one of those teams, Andy, where a lot of the offense comes from the midfield in Etchegini and Huff. Seminoles put pressure on. It's knocked out of bounds by Syracuse. And you said a lot of those plays coming from the center of the field and going out wide. Syracuse is really going to have to keep an eye out for those balls because when you're so defensively minded, you have to hold those plays and hold those runs in from the wide. Play into the middle of the shot, deflected by Vanderbosch. A hard right foot there. Feet planted on the ground. She was awaiting it. Had some had some velocity on it, almost knocked her down. Pass into the middle, Vanderbosch is right there. Vanderbosch is being loud like she needs to. And she's also playing extremely well in reading these shots, just like this one you're about to see. But in keeping those that communication with her back line and reading those plays, 
She's also getting a little frustrated with the back line not clearing it out and following the ball out because Florida State is right there on that second ball every time. Goal kick for Vanderbosch, the sophomore out of Lancaster, New York, right near Buffalo. There's Flurry on the header. UI on the outside. UI in her 30th straight start for the Seminoles. Senior out of Tokyo, Japan. Nice ball movement to free up some space. Gillard gets it right back. Flurry playing it forward to Pilly. Now Cobb. Gets a little push in the back. Down on the ground, no call. Dudley plays it into the middle. Danny, this is a Florida State team that right now tied up 1-1, but if they get a lead, they can be dangerous with how they can control possession. And when, we're the, when they're on the ball like they are now, they are extremely dangerous just because of their vision and how well they stay open. Puff with the ball into the middle of the header, over the net, out of bounds. We've seen a few good plays from Grace Gillard in the back there in stepping to the ball, not letting the Florida State attackers have any time on the ball. But in terms of being on the back line and in that 18-yard box, she's going to have to be very loud and very vocal in terms of directing her other defenders on who to mark up. Now, Andy, what have you seen from this Syracuse defense so far that has worked? They've only allowed one goal so far, but they've stood pretty tough. Syracuse defense is definitely staying very very well in terms of their formation and shape and also not staying very flat. I mean, you look at them right now, they're not so wide and spreading out so much, but they're not also flat, which is what a concern is when you play the 4-4-2. Killer awaiting the kick. Sophomore out of Bedford, England. She's played all 90 minutes of six of the first nine matches. One of those players that's just out there every single game, her and Kylan Grant have started all nine on defense. Gillard plays it up. Looking to make something happen, it's headed away. Auden's right there. Attempts the lefty shot, it's blocked. Florida State pushes it forward. Gillard's right there. SU keeps it on the near side. Now, Annie, what does this SU offense have to do to try to get anything going against such a stout Florida State defense? You have to keep the ball for as long as you can, but not force it. With those attackers and with those midfielders, really just holding onto the ball, playing it back like she just did to Lawher, and then looking for the through pass. Header off the mark. Flurry trying to fight for it back against Huff. Huff goes down to the ground. Now, Aaron Flurry is somebody that just plays with her hair on fire. She seems to go after every ball on, on both sides of the field. She's definitely one of the most passionate players on this field, without a doubt. She goes for every ball. She's not afraid to go into that 50-50 chance. And when she doesn't get it, she doesn't like it, and it fuels her fire. She's also not afraid to, to dance pregame a lot, and, and at the men's soccer games as well. You always see her on camera showing off the moves. She's definitely the spirit animal of the team. All tied up at one. Liesl Auden had the first for the orange. Back to Roque, the senior goalkeeper. She's only faced 36 shots this season, only 11 shots on goal in six games. Her back line, Annie, definitely just does her a lot of favors. And when you have a goalkeeper, too, like that, there's so much trust between the back line and the netminder that you really are just in awe of each other and you just let each other do the work. She's playing with a lot of experience as well. Uh, Roque is a senior, but she's also got Lauren Flynn in front of her, the senior defender, like I mentioned earlier, on the U.S. Women's National Team of the U23 squad. If number two stays in on leg, build normally. Now, Brian Penske mentioned he likes to be a hands-off coach, but someone, something tells me that someone that wants to win that badly isn't going to stay quiet for too long during the game. He did say that he lets his players have their own talks without a coach, without any coaches, and it's led by the older members of the team. Echeghini plays one into the middle. A shot. That's deflected. 
Syracuse stays out of trouble for now. Florida State offense already has five shots. Here's Olsen on the wing. Can't corral that one out of bounds. Olsen scored the one Florida State goal so far. Had the third goal against Clemson last time out. The win over the Tigers. Moved the Seminoles to 6-0 undefeated so far. Off plays it across. Met by Abramson. Abrams, one of those players that's had to be in the midfield on the wings, in the middle, in the back line. A lot of players on this SU team out of position. And as any wing player, whether you're in the back or on, on a forward approach, you know that pressure is key. But also as her defensive-minded self, you know when to contain. So for her, making that pressure move is incredibly important as a forward. Flynn and Gilchrist playing some pass in the back line. Those two will control it all day long. Nikki Thrasher Adams pointing her finger at Hannah Pilly to go get it. There's Dudley pushing it forward. Tries to get a pass off, deflect it away. Coach Thrasher Adams just looking dejected on the sidelines, throwing her hands down. Someone who might have a little bit different style than Penske. She's, she's very intense. She certainly wants to win, and she's got a lot of obstacles in her path with the Syracuse team at the moment. And a huge difference between the two coaches is that hands-on versus that hands-off approach. A much different situation that both of them stepped into, and... 2019, when Coach Thrasher Adams came here, the Syracuse team was really in the basement of the ACC. FSU, when Coach Brian Penske came here, coming off a national championship. You have a team that's in the middle and at the start of a rebuilding phase versus a Florida State team who is coming off of a national championship victory. But a lot of credit to Penske to get that ACC regular season and tournament win in his first year as coach. Seminoles have been to three straight college cups, three national titles in the past decade. Gillard plays it forward. Cobb lays down the header. Taken away by Florida State. Now, Annie, you mentioned before the game, we've already seen Liesl Auden score once, but she might kind of have her work cut out for her, being at her size, only five foot two, playing in the front against a team that controls the, the ball so well on defense. But I think that's where Hannah Pilly's importance comes into play, given her 5'10 frame. And when you have two attackers in this 4-4-2 formation, it's, a, it's good to have that balance in a tall person who can hold off defenders versus one that can make quick runs. Dudley offsides on this run. Whistle blue and it's Syracuse ball. Grace Gillard sets to take the kick. Definitely a close call, but that's Syracuse's um, not first offsides call there, so Syracuse's back line is doing a great job in holding the line and making sure not to give away any through balls. Gillard plays it down the sideline for Lawher. The junior playing on the wing today. Syracuse has struggled on offense all season long. Only nine goals through nine games. Sits in second to last in the ACC with only one goal per game, if, if I'm doing my math correctly. Nine goals, nine games, that sounds about right. But to get a goal against a team that's undefeated is a great feat itself. Well, you're right. Today would make 10 goals in 10 <laughs> games. <laughs> All tied up halfway through the first half. All around the throw-in. Deflected out of bounds, she'll take another. Junior out of Davidson, North Carolina. She's got one goal and one assist this season. And one goal coming against Binghamton. One of two Syracuse wins this year. That was two to one over the Bearcats. The Orange yet to capture a victory in the month of September. They've been on the road the whole time. Five straight road matches. At UMass, Cornell, Harvard, Fairfield, Miami. Now back home. Annie, one thing Nikki Thrasher-Adams talked about was just 
the ability to kind of get back in that routine being back at home. And after five ro games on the road, coming back home to a, a, number a number three ranked team is no easy thing to get back into routine. Zepay on the far side, whistled, and that's a foul. Zepay's filling in for Jody Brown and just did a little bit too much. And there's definitely... There's definitely been some physical plays in this matchup, but with Virginia Tech coming on Sunday, they're gonna need to get ready for some physical play because Virginia Tech is one of those teams that's just gonna be a brutally physical team. Two games in four days for Syracuse, coming off the five road matches. It'll be a tall task. The Orange tied up with Florida State. Chugini plays in front. Dudley was there, but it's knocked away by the Cues. to Gilchrist, she heads it into the midfield. Here's Echeguini, pressuring, passes to Huff. Out to Dudley on the wing. Pushing forward, cuts back, shoots, deflected by Vanderbosch, what a save. The goalkeeper lays out, and keeps the Seminoles off the board. Aside from the one goal for Florida State so far, Shea Vanderbosch looks like herself from last year when she led the ACC in save percentage. She's making incredible saves, reading the shots and the plays very well. And she's also communicating with her team so super strongly. The ACC's leader in saves this season. Corner comes in, it's knocked away out of bounds. Off with the left foot, she'll take another. Pass into the middle. Couldn't get good contact on the header, so the Seminoles stay with it. EY plays it in. On the run, Echigini knocked away. Dudley trying to get the shot off there. Another nice play by Vanderbosch. This is an incredible play from Florida State coming all the way back from EY making it an over-the-top ball and an incredible run from Dudley there. Six saves for Shea Vanderbosch, not even through the first half yet. She's got 49 already this season, but far she, and away the ACC lead. And she's definitely calling for that Syracuse defense and those wingers to come back and mark up. Here's Huff. Not a great kick, short and low. Syracuse trying to knock it away. Pressure comes. Get it outside of the box. Gilchrist looking for space down to the ground. Whistle goes down against the orange. Liesel Auden shakes her head in disbelief. Didn't think she was at fault. Auden trying to step up, step to the ball in that counterattack that Florida State's having on those rebounds and gets the, the wrong end of the stick. UI and Huff both behind the ball. UI scoreless this season, but Huff, she's got two goals and leads the team with five assists. It'll be Huff. Pass into the middle, headed to the right side, it's wide. And that was a classic set piece setup for Florida State where EY goes in for the fake. And then it's taken by another player here, sending it into the middle, trying to disturb Syracuse's defense and didn't do so too well with Kate Murphy coming in and making sure to stay on her man. It was a close call for sure though. Jordan Dudley trying to get the header right there. One of the best offensive players on this FSU team and be wholesale substitutions for the Seminoles, four players coming in. And all with players that are notable peacemakers for this Florida State team in Oni Echigini, Taylor Huff coming off, Jordan Dudley, and Leilani Nisbeth. That, those are four incredible players who are leaders for this Florida State team. Brian Penske said that when 
All-American Jenna Nicewanger left last year after graduating. Those players stepped up for leadership. Olivia Garcia, Lily Farkas, Maggie Titano, as well as Leah Pace all come onto the field. Cross comes in, knocked away. Gilchrist plays it back to the outside. There's Pace into the middle. The header is over the top. Vanderbosch with one heck of an effort right there. Launches herself into the back of the net. EY took the corner. The header from Pace was close. And Danger and Gillard got it out of the way. Vanderbosch was right there, but you never know what can happen in a tight space like that. Reviewing the play. Got to see if it crossed the line. Official review. All tied up at one. This Florida State offense has put so much pressure on today. 11 shots on net. <laughs> Andy, this could be beneficial for a Syracuse team that doesn't necessarily have the leeway of Florida State. Can't make all those substitutions, but they get a little break. D definitely. Having this water break and, and this time to reconnect and take a breath when you have four FSU starters coming off the field with that flexibility and that depth in the team. Syracuse just doesn't have that option. Five corners for FSU so far, eight shots on goal. We talked about that pressure on Shea Vanderbosch. It's something that Nikki Thrasher Adams, she noted earlier this week saying that Vanderbosch hasn't necessarily played any differently. She just kind of has a lot on her plate at the moment. A lot on her plate and also a lot of change up with the team's dynamic and chemistry. Because when you're playing so many different teams and only 14 or 15 players that are suiting up, you're going to have to shift from team to team. Nikki Adams said that their identity has been changing this season because they don't just have the depth and flexibility to stay in their own identity. They have to go case by case. So they'll say it didn't cross the line. Vander Bosch is waiting a goal kick. Now, any one thing that Coach Thrasher Adams noted was that this team is finding a little bit of an identity right now, kind of in the midst of this struggle, that the players that are out there are getting a lot of time and they're fighting, sometimes through injury, just to go out there and play because they care so much. It's a good precedent to set. And you have to give it your all when you know you're one of not many players that can sub off. You've got to be in extremely great shape to know that you're going to play those full 90 minutes maybe and stay on the entire field and in many different di types of positions. You have to be extremely versatile, and that's what the Syracuse squad is right now. Syracuse does have players out of position. They've got players injured. Not too much room for error. Well, Florida State's got plenty of room to make substitutions. This program's a powerhouse. Mimi Van Zanten, she heads into the game. Off comes Ron Ewa. Van Zanten, another Ron freshman on this Ewa. team that carries a good amount of the load. We also saw Jordan Dudley with a whole lot of run, but Van Zanten's a freshman out of Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Syracuse has had to play its young players plenty of time. No freshmen that get too much run. A whole lot of sophomores that you see out there constantly, like Grace Giller. Fleury plays one forward, Roque's right there. Giller, a sophomore that's played every game. Abramson, the same. And Aaron Fleury, a redshirt sophomore. She's become this team's leader at such a young age. And as such, at such a young age, as a redshirt sophomore, filling that captain's role and that leadership role is an extremely, an extremely tall task, excuse me, because you have older players that perhaps might not want to listen to you, but she has that voice, she has that skill to be on, uh, to be a strong leader. Farkas goes down to the ground. Roush was putting the pressure on. Stays FSU's way. Foul on the orange committed by the midfielder Ashley Roush. I like this hustle from Roush. It might have been a risky play there, but I do like the hustle and her getting back and not leaving any time for that midfielder to go and make the counterattack. You think she's lucky not to come away with a card right there? That was a lot of pressure from behind. That was a lot of pressure from behind, in, in, including when you go in with your feet and your legs in that slide from behind. She is lucky there. Here's Roush, pressure on the ball, passes it to Flurry in the midfield. 
Always looking for a shot opportunity. Tries to play it forward. Deflected by Florida State. Right back to Flurry. Taken away. This Seminoles team just suffocates you in the midfield and on defense. Especially for Flurry because she is one of those players that has a target on her back, being so good and taking so many shots. Pens Coach Penske said that they were going to make sure she does not get any free shots. Garcia pass into the middle, knocked away. Cobb right there to play it forward. Now Pilly's had the task of chasing these defenders around when they try to control possession. It must be hard for her not to get tired out. And we haven't seen so many opportunities where Pilly has gotten it at her feet. And we haven't given her the opportunity where she's gonna hold it at her feet and make sure everyone gets up, which is a very important piece of this formation in her role as a forward. Ben Zanton on the header, the throw in rather. Freshman only has one start this season, but she's now played in every game. Kicked out of bounds by Cobb. Van Zanten has an assist this season. That was against Texas A&M. The opener for this Florida State team. They took a trip to Texas to start things off. They beat A&M. They beat number nine TCU. Then they took care of the entire state of Florida, Annie. South Florida, North Florida, and University of Florida. They've been on a tear. Plays it back to Vanderbosch. She boots it forward. Gilchrist into the midfield. Titano, another freshman, getting some run. This Florida State team's got plenty of depth this season. Garcia over to Farkas. Now pace to the far side. This is a prime example of Florida State making their possession and keeping this pretty play. FSU pressuring, Vanderbosch is right there. Florida State taking those opportunities and knowing when to take those opportunities because that play came from four, five, six passes throughout from the left flank all the way to the middle and over to the right flank and back into the middle. It just goes to show how strong Florida State is in keeping the ball and making those angles and passes. And it's really incredible to see them do it without some of their best players out there. Not only the national players, but with the subs they just made, they're relying on a largely reserved group. Ball forward to Olsen, it's deflected. Here's Titano. Pass to the back line, now across the field to Van Zandt. Laher fighting for it on the wing. Out of bounds, a little physical contact there. A whistle on the field, and it's for a substitution. Anna Rupert comes in for the orange, and Asia Cobb trots off. I like this sub here for the orange because Rupert brings in a lot of speed and urgency into this gameplay and into this field. And as a sub, you really have only one task, and it's to make a difference in the game. And usually she does just that. For Florida State, it's Peyton Norse. She fills in for Caitlin Zabay. Zabay getting the starting nod. Her first start since her true freshman year. She's played in 30 games since then, but never getting into the starting lineup. Filling Jody Brown's spot today, who's playing for Team Jamaica. Jody Brown was one of those players that Nikki Adams was worried about because she plays on the wing, but she makes those through balls into the middle of the field and goes over the top of, of the defense. So Syracuse is lucky not to go against Jody Brown tonight. FSU is without an all-ACC first-teamer. Last season, she had eight goals and 10 assists. Over, over. Laher getting ready for the throw-in. There's Auden. Down to the ground, a foul on the Seminoles. That was Heather Gilchrist right there, pushing the back. As a 5-2 forward, 
you're going to get a lot of those experiences and those fouls, especially from Heather Gilchrist, who's much taller than Auden. Auden a little bit overmatched today, but she didn't back down to the challenge. Scored the first goal of the day, gave Syracuse a 1-0 lead. Florida State tied it up not too much later. Not Olsen goal, make it 1-1. One -one. Syracuse looking to make something happen on offense. Haven't controlled much of the possession today. This FSU back line has been stout. Abramson was right there for the header. So was Grace Gillard. Syracuse is doing a really good job tonight of putting a lot of fast-paced pressure on the ball and making sure to stay on that ball when you have it. But in terms of possession, that's a thing that FSU is really outplaying Syracuse tonight. Move your feet, Leah. Move your feet. Yeah, you can win that. Flurry facing three defenders. Can't find any space for a pass. Garcia plays it forward. Norse, the freshman, plays it back. Now the Seminoles switching fields. Opportunity to play it forward. There's Pace. Knocked away by SU. Come on, Liz, come on. Farkas plays it into the middle. Trying to push it forward, but can't. Make you go back. Oh, Joe Chris plays it back to Roque. Now the senior goalkeeper. Like Coach Penske mentioned, Danny, not only is she a great shot stopper, but she can play balls really well on the defensive end. And that's what goes to show when you're really an all-around soccer player, not just a goalkeeper. And that's one of those things that Nikki Adams said early in the season she wanted Shay Vanderbosch to have that full soccer mentality instead of just goalkeeping, both in terms of touch and feeding the ball, distribution, not just stopping balls. Roque, a senior, Vanderbosch, a sophomore in her second season starting. Can only imagine if she continues to develop like she has these first two years, she'll certainly be in a good spot. Roque coming in as a freshman for FSU was actually the only second player under Mark Krikorian to start as a true freshman in net. Something Shea Vanderbosch did last season. Goy led the ACC in save percentage at 82%. This year, those numbers have dipped a little bit. She's down to 75, largely like we talked about because of the injuries to midfield and back line. And yes, your defense has just faced a lot of pressure. Leads the conference in saves. Started with 43 today. Florida State's certainly been piling on the shots on net. And that's going to be like every ACC opponent because this is arguably one of the best conferences in college soccer, and it's only getting bigger, right? Play into the middle. Norse heads down to the ground. Right back up, looking for a chance. Here's Farkas. A play to the left side. The shot off the crossbar. An attempt to clear it away by Syracuse. A nice job hustling there to keep it from going out of bounds in the back. Keeps it to the sideline, only a throw in. She got called for the same thing over here. Ball in the middle, knocked away by Anna Rupert. Annie, you mentioned earlier that you've seen a lot from Anna Rupert that you like. We haven't seen her push very far on the offensive end, but she certainly has a lot of potential. And as a wing, that's going to be tricky in this 4 4 2 formation because the wings are supposed to be defensive defensively minded, but when you have the ball, you gotta try your best to push up all the way up. And there's no surprise you're subbing the wingers because 90 minutes in a 4-4-2 formation is not sustainable. Rupert, the sophomore out of Arlington, Virginia, right in your neck of the woods, Annie. She's got a goal and an assist this season. FSU pushing down the sideline. Rupert's right there. Facing contact, ball rolls out of bounds. SU goal kick coming up. Rupert did a great job of following that pass, making sure not to let the Florida State attacker get it on, the, on her feet. And she shielded it out of bounds to make sure that Syracuse had, had 
kept the ball. Rupert, out of Virginia, went to Washington Liberty High School. A two-sport athlete, she played soccer and also ran track, and track was definitely beneficial for her. She actually had to change her running style to be more efficient. Her coach said she had a poor knee bend and drive, so running track, getting to actually learn how to run, kind of benefited her on the soccer field. Flurry pushes it forward. Looking for a chance. Millie gets the shot, but a whistle offside. Despite the offsides, I love this play from Syracuse. Aaron Flurry keeping it and reading that pass, splitting the Florida State defenders, and Flurry getting that 1v1 with the keeper, just unlucky with too early on her run. At least someone that can put the pressure on the 5'10 forward. She's got two goals this year. Always ready to put pressure on. Florida State looking to push it right back. SU says no. Flurry lets it go. Now, Andy, with Aaron and Flurry being the leading scorer on this team and not starting as a forward, why, why do you think that is? I think that Syracuse really needs Flurry in the center of the midfield. With just she and Roush only in the center of the field, you do need your two strongest players to withhold the Florida State midfielders, especially when you're gonna be um, out, uh, out marked with only three midfielders for Florida State and only two for Syracuse. Ty on the pass in the midfield, pace to the far side. Seminoles pushing ahead, looking to counter. They do such a nice job of keeping possession. There's Norse, knocked away by Rupert. Although a natural forward that can push the ball near the net, she's done a nice job holding it down on the defensive end. Gillard's right there to face the pressure. Let's it go out of bounds. Liesel Odden scored the first goal of the game just three minutes in. Beata Olsen responded four minutes later. Odden got her first goal of the season. Olsen got her third. This is her 50th career match, the senior out of Sweden. Was all ACC second team in 2021. Last year, all ACC third team. Now with Jody Brown not in the lineup, Alagoa as well. She's Gotten a little bit more of the brunt down her shoulders. Lowers down on the ground with an injury. We'll have to step aside for a moment. Syracuse all tied up at one as this half winds down. Lower on the ground. Both teams will retreat to their benches and wait for this to be settled. Referees going back and forth with the coaches. And Jack, this is not an injury that Syracuse needs or wants, of course, but with a thin roster and the importance of Lawher in her position and how well she's been playing starting the last four games for Syracuse. Lawher has had to play in the midfield on defense. She's a junior that's taken up a lot of onus to be an important player on this team. She's got a goal and an assist, but also been strong on the back line. This is a Syracuse team already facing a lot of trouble with injuries. Like we mentioned earlier, Coach Nikki Thrasher-Adams said she's only going to be able to suit up 14 or 15 players. She's had so many go down with injuries. They had some issues in the preseason, the summer with players leaving the program. No injury can, can really hurt this team anymore. They're already in a bad spot. Something that Nikki Adams coined this season as just unlucky. Going from one of the best seasons Syracuse has had in a long time last year, and definitely the best under head coach Nikki Adams, to a season where you can't control a lot of these injuries. The Orange were 8-7-3 and three last season, 1-5-3 and three in ACC play, and Coach Nikki Thrasher-Adams said they, they did take a step forward last season, but this year just gotten unlucky, like you mentioned, Danny. 
And while Syracuse and Florida State tied up at one, we'll take a look at the rest of the ACC. Florida State's been dominant. They came back to beat Clemson, trailing 2 0. They put up four straight to win 4 2. Duke took down Boston College 2 0. 11 straight ACC opening play wins. Duke has been a juggernaut in conference play. Miami, one of those teams like Syracuse that has struggled in the ACC, a missed opportunity for SU. And Miami was the only ACC opponent last year that Syracuse took down in the similar score 2 1. The only other opponent that Syracuse had a chance against in the ACC was NC State, a tie game. But going into this Miami matchup last weekend, Syracuse really had that chance against the Hurricanes. And to wrap it up, Louisville and Virginia, they drew at one to one. Louisville's first point against Virginia in school history. Well, Kendall Lawher gets helped off the field. Injury didn't look great. She went down to the ground immediately. She. Clearly uh, looks to be in plenty of pain. She's off the field and both squads back out there to resume play as we've only got about a minute and a half the first half winding down. Everything you got, Connor, you got it. Got it. Lawher has dealt with injury before. She missed the first game of the season recovering from an injury and she's played every one since. Hey. Carol Monterey will Replace her onto the field, the freshman out of Miami, Florida, filling that spot of Kendall Lawher. Monterey actually has a very interesting story. She got into Syracuse all by herself with no athletics in mind, and then that summer actually reached out to try out and made the team. Farkas fighting off a defender, can't get free. Roush controls possession, less than a minute to go. Plays it forward, Hilly on a run. Finds some open space, she's got Rupert behind. One on one with her defender, ball knocked out of bounds. An SU throw in coming up. Crouch did a great job of controlling the tempo in the middle of the field there by making a turn and holding it the ball and really looking up the field and seeing where. And the ball's deflected in, Syracuse takes the lead two to one. After taking a 1-0 lead to open it up, Florida State tied it, and now Syracuse makes it 2-1. Off the header from Heather Gilchrist, her second crucial mistake of the day. Syracuse is exploiting this Florida State defense and forcing those mistakes, but it all comes from Alyssa Aberson making that chance and throwing it into the, getting it into the box. Some physical play, the Seminoles push it forward. Trailing by one. I, I don't understand. 10, 9, I, I just don't. 8, 7, 6. Five. Florida State with one last opportunity. Ball played into the middle. Gillard's right there. Now many sure didn't expect it. As we head into the locker room, Syracuse leads two to one of time. Alongside Annie Claff, I'm Jack Gordon. Annie, what's made this Syracuse team kind of put the pressure on so far? Syracuse is capitalizing on those opportunities when they're getting inside the 18 yard box. Something that Florida State isn't doing quite as much. Florida State has that opportunity and their skill to maintain possession but they're not capitalizing as much inside the 18 as they usually are. Now Florida State made two crucial mistakes. A miscommunication between Heather Gilchrist and the goalie Christina Roque led to Liesl Auden's goal number one just three minutes into the game. The second goal was an own goal off the head of Heather Gilchrist again. That's given Syracuse a 2-1 lead. Now Andy, if the Orange want to keep the pressure on is we go through this second half, what do they have to do? They definitely have to hold the ball a bit more and not force it up. 
just like that, but um, ho hold the ball a little bit more and make sure you're holding possession when you can, not just force it on the f up the field. Now, one of the goals for the Syracuse team leaving the weekend was to remain injury free. That just didn't happen today. Kendall Waher went down with an injury. She's got ice on the knee and crutches with her as well. Kendall Laher is a crucial player to this team in terms of remaining calm and composed, but also going in for those 50-50 balls and those pressure, high pressure moments. And that's just something Syracuse cannot afford to give up right now is more injuries. A very intelligent player on the back line or the midfield always seems to make the right decision. Carol Monterey came in for Laher as the first half came down. And Another opportunity for a young player. She's a freshman out of Miami, Florida, getting a lot of playing time. That's one thing Coach Thrasher Adams mentioned would be a positive through this tough season is that a lot of players have gotten opportunities. Especially young players, because you look at how many young players on this squad, like Shay Vanderbosch and Aaron Flurry, have gotten that playing time and are now in leadership roles. There's Huff, a pass into the middle. Dudley pulls it back. Back to Huff. The pass knocked away. That's an interesting play to look at because Dudley, instead of taking that shot and forcing it, because she knew that the Syracuse defender was gonna block it anyways, she kept going across the 18 yard box and finding that open player ultimately did not work out, but that's the right idea for when you're up there. Now, Annie, did you find it interesting when they just pulled four of their best offensive players so only about halfway through that first half? Yes, but when you know how strong this Florida State team is in terms of depth, it does not surprise me because you have all these players that are going to make a difference and make an impact when they hop on that field. And it's not just gonna be the Oni Echeguinis of this team that can do that. Echeguinis had plenty of shots today, hasn't capitalized. The lone goal for the Seminoles has come from Beata Olsen, the senior out of Sweden. Huff takes the header, ball goes right back to her. Goes down the sideline. Looking for space, a nice move on the ball. Deflected away by Roush. Ball back into the middle, Vanderbosch is right there. She leaps and makes the grab. It looks like Wynn there tried to send a floating pass into the box for her other attackers to go in and get it, but it went right to Vanderbosch, and Vanderbosch read it very well to come off her back line and, and hold it into her arms. Vanderbosch already has seven saves today, giving her 50 on the season. Some tough physical play, no call, but a late whistle. Maggie Titano carrying it. Gets called after the physical contact, shoving Asia Cobb down to the ground. It's definitely a fair call there with her coming in and so much momentum and her taking out her legs with her too. Stop the clock if you don't get a move on though. I was asking about Flurry leaves the ball for Kate Murphy, junior defender who's back in action. She missed the U Miami game after a red card against Fairfield. She's a defender this team definitely relies on. Murphy was one of those players that Coach Brian Penske was worried about too because he knew that she is explosive coming out of the back and on the wings. Here's Nesbeth carrying it in the middle, plays it forward. Olsen trying to make a run. Vanderbosch toying and she falls right on it. Looks like a heel kick almost came into Vanderbosch's face, the SU sideline. We'll have a word. And when you're there, when you're Vanderbosch with the ball, and here she is, when she turns around, she's gonna throw her heel back. She's not actually gonna kick her, but it's just that simple action of doing so that looks like retaliation there. Beata Olsen stepped over Vanderbosch's head and then almost threw her foot into her face. Thankfully, no contact there. Syracuse sideline wasn't happy about it. Now a foul against the Orange. Both teams with four fouls apiece today. It's been physical, nothing too bad, only one card so far. Here's a good example there of Syracuse defense coming in and wait and running in in pairs of twos. There was Flurry and Kate Murphy going in, 
following Echigini with the ball. Here's Kate Murphy coming in for a backup just in case. Flurry ultimately doing it on her own, but this is one of the things that Nikki Adams said they had worked on in practice is, is defending in twos. Pass into the middle is off the mark. Failed corner attempt for the Seminoles. They've had six today. Syracuse with a goose egg. The Orange have still managed to put two goals on the board, largely because of mistakes, but Annie, sometimes it's just good to be in the right place in the right time. Definitely, and when you do look at that breakdown of six corner kicks to none for Syracuse, it does speak towards the fact of Florida State's possession and getting into the opposing half. Syracuse, on the other hand, has been just capitalizing on mistakes. Florida State pressuring the shot from Huff. Vanderbosch is right there. Vanderbosch is doing an incredible job in reading where the shots are gonna go. She's on her back line and ready for this shot, and she's just there when it's gonna come to her. And crashing down on it too to make sure she's zoning it out and making sure it stays in her arms. FSU trailing two to one. The Seminoles have been a dominant second half team all season long. They've been unstoppable in the final 45 minutes. So far this season, they've outscored opponents 13 to one in the second half compared to just a 6-5 advantage in the first half. Florida State controlling possession in the midfield, the pass to the far side. Now under Brian Penske, the Seminoles have outscored opponents 54 to 11 in the second half. This is Coach Penske's second season at FSU. Deflected by Fleury, the Seminoles keep it. Huff plays it off, gets it right back. She's got space. Over to Olsen. The cross off the mark. There's Nesbeth. A shot deflected. Flurry's there. Roush boots it forward. There's Sophia New. Go back. Keep running. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Wynn, the Joe. sophomore Joe. out of Joe. Pensacola, Florida, plays it forward. Hold on, Taylor. Off back to win. Off the foot of Titano, a mistake there. Pilly's got it. Syracuse looking to push forward on offense. Now they just haven't had those types of controllable possessions all along the wings. Something Syracuse needs to worry about a little bit starting coming off the second half is not just playing a game of kick and run or a game of kickball because when you have such a fast team to go up against, it's almost second nature to go and just kick it ahead and try and run after it. But you can't do that against such a good possessive team like Florida State. You have to match that energy. Annie, something tells me that you were probably one of the first picks in kickball every time that was played in gym class. I mean, when we played intramural kickball freshman year, yes. it wasn't like that. <laughs> No, it was not. Florida State trailing two to one. Lost in the championship, though. That was unfortunate. One more football, though. Come on, come on. Echigini pressuring. Scoreless today. The pass in the middle as she goes down to the ground. There's Pilly. Trying to get SU some time. A great job of stalling, playing her defender. Pilly did exactly what you want there when you're one of two forwards up there is holding the ball, keeping your back to the goal, and just waiting for other players to come and move up and help you out. Here comes Olsen. The pass is off the mark. Tried to get across there. Another pass at the top of the box. Huff, she controls it, it's knocked away. There's an example there of Syracuse just trying to play it forward as soon as they can and get it out of the box. Dudley, a shot over the net. Wow, what a leg. She had plenty of power on that, almost slotted it. I mean, when you're a defender there, going up against, going up against a forward that's just so quick with her footwork, and making those fakes to try and go, go ahead, 
there's not much you can do but interject, but then you get caught off guard. Now, how, how hard is it defending someone like Jordan Dudley, who stands at five foot 11? She's the tallest player on the field and has plenty as Shea Vanderbosch is down on the ground with an injury. Dudley, she's got so much, so many technical st skills as well as her height. It's gotta be tough to defend. She's really the, fu the full package because when you're such a tall player, it usually doesn't come with so much speed and urgency, but because of it, she has all that. Vanderbosch down on the ground after diving for that one. She's got eight saves today to tie a season high. Been remarkable for Syracuse today. One short of her career high. Been a staple of this Syracuse team for two seasons now. The Orange have already lost Kendall Lawher today. She's on the sidelines on crutches at the moment, and it would just be devastating to lose the starting goalie. Especially in, Va in Vanderbosch, because the way she leads her team from the back of the line is so crucial. But she made an incredible dive just landing that hard and on her arms, too. Yeah, she dove for that ball. Her left knee hit the ground first and then her arms as the rest of her body fell towards the ground. I mean, when you're a goalie, you take so much of a beating, not just the shots coming at you, but when you're diving across the net, certainly can't feel good. That's Sam Haley warming up on the sidelines. Freshman goalie out of Central Square. She's from Syracuse. Plenty of visits to SU Soccer Stadium before she put on the orange and blue. She's never actually played in a game as Vanderbosch has started and finished all nine. The sophomore talking to the trainer in front of the net. Sorting things out. Looks like she'll stay out there. How incredible is that? Just a sophomore, a leader of this team and facing injuries. She certainly doesn't feel good right now, but she's got no other choice in her head. It just goes to show how much of a resilient player she is and a resilient leader. She knows this team does not have that much depth in terms of numbers, and she's just going to take that sacrifice and go, whether she feels 100% or not. Career day for Vanderbosch already. Eight saves to tie a season high. One short of her career high. Sticking in this game and battling injury at the same time. Here's Echeguini pressuring forward. Middies scoreless today, has two shots, one on goal. The cross deflected. We're coming, Taylor. Just move your feet, move your feet. There's Cobb, ball goes out of bounds in favor of the Orange. Echeguini not being allowed to do so much today. She definitely had a target on her back once you know that she's been on a World Cup team just this summer. She came back from the World Cup and in London and was visiting family just three days before FSU's first game. Like you said, Echeguini's on that Nigerian World Cup squad. Sessio takes it back. Trying to play it forward, there's Nesbeth. Pass in, Echeguini looking to get across. It's deflected out of bounds. That gets the sophomore goalkeeper fired up. Echeguini's been held without a goal today. She leads this squad with five into this game, leading the team with 11 shots as well. Flurry taking a huge captain's role here in not playing a forward position, but in a midfield, making sure to stay on your man. Off on the cross, right in front of the net, it's knocked in. Florida State ties it up. A blunder for the Syracuse defense has allowed the Seminoles to put goal number two on the board. disorganization from the Syracuse back line here. There's a lot going on with injury and, and just lack of communication with it bouncing off Pilly's foot into the back of the net. You could tell right away Hannah Pilly knew that that one was on her, put her face into her hands, understood what just happened. And her body was not squared away from the goal enough. She was facing the goal too much, focusing too much on the player behind her. Now, when we talked to Coach Nikki Thrasher-Adams about that Miami game, she mentioned the own goal that the players have been working on squaring their bodies up straight the entire season. They couldn't against Miami, and here's another own goal. 
FSU putting the pressure back on. They're headed for another corner Taylor. kick. Taylor, in the, in the last goal. five minutes, there's just been far too many careless, uh, poor clearing attempts from Syracuse with the own goal. And then here, some miscommunication between the two Syracuse defenders, Kate Murphy and Kylan Grant. Just not talking enough there. Off with another corner. Sends it in, headed away. That time, a nice play by the Orange defense to keep it safe. Go back. Cobb cuts it back, keeps possession. Well, a nice tackle there by Van Zanten. Pop there trying to take it herself and go up the field as fast as possible, but there was no help there in front of her. She had the time to go back, turn and face her other defenders, and give the ball so a little bit more time because she knew Florida State was gonna come in and close her down. So Annie, out of the four goals today, we've seen two own goals, one for Syracuse, one for Florida State. One misplay between a defender, Heather Gilchrist, and the goalie, Kristen Roque. The only other goal was by Beata Olsen early in the first half. It's mainly been a disorganized game when it's come to the scoring. I think from both coaches, you're gonna get a little bit of disappointment in careless mistakes. Especially coming from Brian Penske, who knows the standard of this program and knows that the expectation is a College Cup appearance and a conference championship, too. Aaron Fleury, the leading scorer for Syracuse, down on the ground, helped out by her teammate Grace Gillard. It was Jordan Dudley who pushed her in the back. Syracuse awarded the ball. Appears to be just some cramps and tight muscles because she waved off no to the trainer to come on the field. Flurry is another one of those resilient players that if she's not feeling 100%, she's not gonna take the answer to come out because she has that ability to play the full 90 minutes that the, that the team needs her to. Certainly doesn't want to come off. She definitely won't. As Coach Thrasher Adams noted this weekend, there's Players struggling with injuries on this team that are playing, and we've already seen a couple. Flurry and goalie Shea Vanderbosch staying in the game after getting a little rattled. Especially with Flurry in the middle, playing a full 90 minutes, you are bound to cramp up, especially against a fast team like Florida State. FSU is certainly fast in that midfield with that Chagini, Huff, a couple of players that have Made an impact all season long. We haven't seen a, a ton of Etchegini pressuring today. As Flurry's down on the ground once again. On the Syracuse defensive side, she's staying down on the ground as the trainer heads out to talk to her. Syracuse has already lost Kendall Lawher. Now 15 minutes into the second half. Flurry is down on the ground again for the second time in just a minute. Flurry, a leader of this team, only a redshirt sophomore, getting stretched out at the moment. Florida State makes four substitutions once again. Now, Flurry has battled with injury before. She missed all of 2021 with an, an off-season knee surgery. That's why she's a redshirt. She's played the first two seasons, but well, she's battling with, looks like maybe some cramps, something in the hamstring, possibly. Number 16, Sophia First time was getting pushed to the ground by Dudley. Now that time by Nesbeth. First time she tried to pop up as quick as she could. Took her some time, she was limping afterwards. Now this one has certainly taken a lot longer, especially with Nikki Thrasher Adams out there. It definitely means a little bit more. She's having trouble straightening her leg. Now, Annie, if Aaron Flurry can't come back into this game, how would you expect the Syracuse offense to adjust? Because she's typically the one that everything runs from. Flurry's definitely the type of player to go all in and making sure her man is marked. And whoever comes in for her is going to need to make sure that the players in the Florida State midfield, especially when you're outnumbered three to two, 
that you're marking up and making sure you're cutting off those passing angles as well. Well, that fill-in is Mackenzie Dupre, the sophomore midfielder out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She transferred from Towson. She's played all 10 games this season without a start. Now she's filling in for Aaron Flurry. Here's Gilchrist. She has the own goal that allowed Syracuse to put the second goal on the board. Also made a mistake early in the first half, allowing Liesel Auden to score. Garcia passes it to the far side. FSU, nice passing in the middle. Ball from Farkas, knocked away. Auden pushes it forward. Gilchrist is right there. Now Nesbeth goes by Roush, takes a shot. Vanderbosch knocks it away. Florida State corner kick coming up. Syracuse is just allowing too much time in the midfield for players like Nesbeth to, Nesbeth to take that shot. When you're getting so close to the top of the 18 yard box, any shot is free reign. And Syracuse just needs to be able to close down on those. Well, that was save number nine for Shea Vanderbosch, tying her career high. Corner coming in from EY. The header over the top, still in bounds. Now it trickles out. Ashley, making, Ashley Rouch making a strong play there in shielding the ball so as not to let Florida State get a foot on it and get another corner kick either. Looks like they didn't credit Vanderbosch with that save. Still at eight. Now they'll give her the ninth. <laughs> Still ties her career high. The sophomore goalkeeper you, you be me right has been now, so man. big for this SU team. Seminoles pressuring. There's Vanderbosch. Whistle on the field. Talk about kicking out. Possession given to the Orange here. Offsides on the Seminoles. Gillard boots it away. There was a look at Penske being vocal out there on the sideline. Something he said he will make it case by case when he takes a look at the type of game, whether he needs to interject or not. Well, Florida State hasn't trailed much this season. The Clemson game was the only time they have. Down 2-0, they storm back, scored four straight. Now this is the second time they've trailed twice in this game. Shot off from FSU, Vanderbosch is right there. Down 1-0, then down 2-1. Seminoles responded, but it was a Syracuse own goal. A rare look today for Vanderbosch where she closes down on the ball, but it trickles out of her control and goes out for a goal kick. She's been really good today about Tip, holding to on ready to ready the to ball when it comes to her. Here's Ron Ey, the senior out of Tokyo, Japan, taking the corner. Cross is outside of the net, out of bounds. That one was deflected away. Syracuse goal kick coming up. Kenzie! Come on! Tied to Ashley! Coach Thrasher Adams in her fifth season at Syracuse. Fourth head coach in program Open. history. When we talked to her earlier this week. She definitely mentioned this team has been unlucky this year. They've been bitten by the injury bug and it's happened twice today. Kendall Lawher went down with a knee injury in the first half. Aaron Fleury came out in this second half, still on the sidelines. Now Fleury is up and walking around. Other way! Time run, wide Seminoles, OT. some nice ball movement. Here's EY. Pass to Garcia, she loses it. Fight for possession in the corner, right back to FSU. Garcia plays in the middle, a nice touch pass, the shot. Deflected away by Vanderbosch, what a play. The sophomore goalkeeper, 10 saves on the day. She's been tremendous. 
career high for Vanderbosch. Annie, you could really say she's single-handedly keeping Syracuse in this game. <laughs> Definitely, and when you are saving such a crucial play like that too, where Florida State quite literally split up the Syracuse defense in making that run and play, a perfect shot opportunity that she just saved. The ball to Garcia, right outside the 18, the righty shot. Another save from Vanderbosch. Battling injury, battling obstacles on the back line. Vanderbosch has been there. An incredible save there when Syracuse's defense is getting split up. And another chance here where, this, where the Florida State winger is wide open to take that shot. She got unlucky there slipping and lucky for Syracuse. The cross comes in, the header is knocked away. A great chance for FSU, another header, that time for Maud. Syracuse looking to keep it away. The orange kick it out of bounds. Syracuse trying their best to get it out of the box here. FSU capitalizing on those rebounds and Syracuse trying to get it out as fast as possible. Another opportunity there where Shea Vanderbosch just couldn't corral it. A couple of times she's had the ball in her hands and dropped in front of the net. Nonetheless, she's been incredible today. FSU's 12th corner, here it is. Blocked away. A header past the 18. Staying out of trouble, this ball's over the net. An, F, uh, an SU goal kick coming up as Aaron Fleury, SU's leading scorer, checks back into the game. Keep in mind that the corner kick ratio here is 12 to zero. Syracuse has not had any, any goal kick, or corner kick opportunities, excuse me, and Vanderbosch is up skill here on the back line is just incredible in saving those 12 op opportunities. Flurry, the redshirt sophomore checks out. In rather, and Dupre, the sophomore, is out. The Orange get their leading goal scorer back in this one. flurry has got three goals and two assists on the season. She scored in the last matchup against Miami. That was a PK late in the game. Whistles on the field. Ball is out of bounds and We'll have to throw it in. Flurry was one for nine shooting in that game. She certainly isn't afraid to take shots. And that is something that Brian Penske noted as well in making sure that Flurry is one of those players FSU is going to have to lock down and not let her get any free shots. Here come the Seminoles. A tough tackle. Whole lot of contact. It was Dudley full steam ahead. That's a card. Counter attack card. This is an interesting foul because you can tell she's going in intentionally for the ball and not to take her out. But the collision was just too much for it to, to not be a foul. Yellow card given out on Kylan Grant. A blocker charge call right there. Dudley had a full steam ahead, went right into Kylan Grant, who didn't move a muscle. She absorbed the contact, and here comes the free kick. Second yellow card of the day. UI sends it in. Off the chest. Dudley looking to make a play. Vanderbosch in the mix. The ball's loose. Another deflection, this time out of bounds. Corner, corner. Come on, it's coming. The Seminoles corner coming up. That'll be number 13 today. Vanderbosch is saving presence in net is incredible, but the defense is just allowing way too much room and space for Florida State players to get on that ball and rip a shot. Nice deflection there from Kylan Grant. She got right into the mix. Here comes the cross. Blocked out of bounds. Seminoles want the corner. They're not going to get it. SU corner kick coming up. With this goal kick opportunity, Syracuse just needs to keep it out wide and hold the ball, whether you're playing it back into the middle for a sequence or a give and go pass. We've done it but all get game. Get it back out wide. Why? 
Vanderbosch has faced so much pressure today, battling through injury. She leads the ACC in saves. Today she's got 13, facing the most pressure she ever has. 26 shots for Florida State. Previously for Shea Vanderbosch, the most she had faced was 25, 24 rather. EY crosses it in, deflected, a shot off the mark. Seminoles want a corner again. Not going to get it. A goal kick coming up. Top of the box. Go ahead. Substitution for Syracuse, number 18, Rhea James. For number 10. Rhea James checks in for the orange. Hannah Billy comes hey. out. James, the junior out of Boston Lake, she's New York. In the box. Scoreless this season. She's only got one shot. Hannah Billy, she's been big for this SU offense. Not today, but she's got two goals on the season. Frustrated because she's taking an absurd amount of time. There's a lot of frustration on the sidelines here from the Florida State side that every time Vanderbosch has a goal kick, she takes way too long to send it out of the box. But Syracuse coaching staff is fighting back saying, Florida State attackers are in the box still while she's setting up the goal kick. There's not much you can do there in that fight. Seminoles keeping the pressure on, Syracuse plays it forward. Now, Annie, one thing we talked about with head coach Nikki Thrasher-Adams, that if she could come away from the weekend with two points, she'd be happy. Right now, SU's in a good position. They kind of would just love to fight for a tie. And that might be part of the reason why Florida State's getting so mad about Vanderbosch taking her time on those goal kicks. Now, the last big tie for this Syracuse program, 2-2 two two against number 2 Virginia last season. That was the last time Shea Vanderbosch faced that career high in shots with 24. Today, it's been 25. That was a huge play from Grace Gillard there in sliding, slide tackling there to get, get it out of the box because when you have players in Florida State with that presence in the box, that ball's knocked in, and Florida State takes the lead. Olivia Garcia tried to capitalize, but it'll be an offsides. Score stays tied up at 2-2. Two to two. Garcia was offsides. And like I was just saying before the, the almost goal, that when, once Florida State has that ball in the 18-yard box, they're extremely dangerous because of their passing sequences as well as their speed of play to get a shot off. Here's EY playing it in the middle for pace. The pass forward. There goes Farkas. A whole lot of room. The shot knocked away by Vanderbosch exactly what the Syracuse goalkeeper needed to do. If there's one difference between the two halves tight tonight, Jack, it's that the second half has all been Florida State chances, and it's all been in the Syracuse defensive half. Syracuse is not having enough opportunity getting it up the field and following it with enough transition to hold the ball. All tied up at two, Syracuse says it's work cut out for it against the second half Seminoles. Florida State Outscoring opponents 13 to one in the second half this season. FSU just welcomed three of its best players back onto the field. Taylor Huff, Oni Echeguini, and Beata Olson. There's Garcia with another opportunity. That's why it left. And also Hannah Pilly coming back onto the field for Syracuse after not long of a rest, only about two to three minutes. Here comes a corner for Florida State. Syracuse pretty surprised. They thought that shot just went right out of bounds. Instead, the referees say it was deflected. Fifteenth corner for FSU. Blocked. Syracuse allowed an own goal on a corner earlier this half. It was knocked in by Hannah Pilly on the right post. Headed away. 
The shot off the crossbar. The header, second chance over the net. Florida State just keeps the pressure on, but FSU can't capitalize. FSU is making all the right calls in following up these balls. Here's the shot coming up, and then you'll see FSU is following up with those rebounds with Garcia coming in right there. Syracuse just has to really watch out for those and follow up with the ball. I mean, how much closer can you get? We've seen a couple off the crossbar today. Florida State can't be happy. They've had so much pressure, but haven't capitalized. Down goes Cobb. Ron EY with the contact. An SU free kick coming up. This is one of the only Syracuse attacking chances this half so far. They just really need to crash this free kick ball, get a head on it, or any body part on it. Now Florida State in a tie right now. They don't like that clock running down, so Olivia Garcia, she'll do anything she can to keep play going. Kate Murphy lines up for the free kick. Now Syracuse was plenty content to take its time. Garcia made sure to change that. Murphy plays it slow, gives it off to Roush. Now the ball in front, deflected away. Murphy tries to play it to Flurry on the wing, but Garcia's right there. The sophomore pushes it forward, pass into the middle. Knocked away by the Syracuse defense. Syracuse just getting outplayed on this right oh, flank in the midfield here. Ball played That's forward, right. Garcia's right. waiting. Vanderbosch falls on it. All tied up at two right now. Syracuse hasn't had a ranked win in over 20 years. Last time they tied, it was two to two against number two Virginia last season. Another player down on the ground for Syracuse. That looks like Anna Rupert. Now, Annie, with this team just having so few players right now, there's so much expected of the ones on the field. Do you think all those minutes can add up and lead to cramps, things like that? Definitely, especially when you're playing the full 90 minutes, like Ashley Rouch is one of them. And uh, Grace Gillard, too. It's just there's too much opportunity for a lack of water breaks and a lack of just rest in general that it's gonna lead to cramps and it's gonna lead to exhaustion. Kate Murphy, the other player getting stretched out. This isn't the last game of the weekend for Syracuse. The Orange have Virginia Tech coming up on Sunday. Two games in four days after a five game road stretch. That's gotta be so challenging. And two very different types of teams. Nikki Adams highlighted this when we spoke with her recently. You have Florida State who plays a very pretty game with their possession and just holding the ball. But then you have Virginia Tech, which is just extremely physical. Both teams difficult in their own ways, but when you have players playing full 90 minutes and going into another Brandon. tough matchup of the weekend, Brandon. it's yeah, only gonna get more difficult. <laughs> Looks like we're gonna see a sub. Rupert struggling to get off the field right now. Carol Monterey expected to head out there. She approaches the midfield line and it's her second time checking in. Monterey, the five foot four defender, freshman out of Miami, Florida, replacing Rupert and Annie at this point, you're not necessarily saying, okay, Rupert, a midi, a forward, let's put another out there, you can't. You just don't have the personnel right now to keep players in position. When you're suiting up only 14 or 15 players, you don't have that many options. And you take a look at Flurry, who plays in any position almost that Nikki Adams puts her. And as a captain, you set that precedent so that every other player on the team has to do that too. Seminole's looking to push. There's Huff, the speedy midfielder. Plays it off to the right. Dudley tries to go back to her. Kick to the sideline. That one rolls out of bounds. Huff has had possession in the midfield plenty today. She transferred from Tennessee, followed her head coach, Brian Penske. Here's Huff, plays it into the middle. And Chagini tries to make a run. Knocked away, there's James. 
fighting back for SU. Gives it off to Flurry, down on the ground. Huff now to Olsen. Tries to go back to Huff, kicked away. When you're getting to 13 minutes left on the clock, Syracuse at this point is just playing so defensively minded in trying their best not to let them score, but almost it gets too flustered for them. You can see how tired some of these Syracuse players are. Gilchrist plays it forward. Vanderbosch awaits. Kicked out of bounds, an SU goal kick coming up. When you're playing just a game of kickball at this point, it leads for so much room for mistakes and for Florida State to just get the ball right back in there because we know that Florida State has the possessive ability to keep the ball and bring it back onto the attacking half. So it, it's just like the kickball attack method is just not working. Get into 11! Now, do you think it's harder for Syracuse to try to push the ball at all because of the personnel out there, or do you think it's more of a stylistic change trying to stay back? I think when you have this tie, a result that would be favorable for Syracuse, just trying to maintain it and not let Florida State score is the main priority. But if you look in the first half, Syracuse did a great job of pushing up and making those transitions, and we're not seeing that tonight. All square at two right now. There was an injury on the field. It was with Ashley Roush. Collided with Taylor Huff. Went down to the ground, started grabbing up near her head. Referees made sure to stop play immediately. Injuries have just become too common for the Syracuse team. It looks like Roush has to come off the field. Anything, any type of head injury, you can't take any kind of risk. Looks like Mackenzie Dupre will check in for the second time. She was in to fill in for Aaron Flurry earlier when she came off, but Flurry is one of those players that's too tough to keep on the sidelines for long. Seems like a lot of this Syracuse team is that way. They are just battling right now, not just through playing almost 90 straight minutes, but a lot of them are already dinged up. And Roush is another one of those players that you can't keep out for so long. So if she's allowed to go back in after this potential head injury, then she's going to want to. Nesbeth playing it on the wing. Off to Dudley. Space to run. Over to Huff. Pass into the middle. Dudley tries to get a pass off. Knocked away. Syracuse with a nice clear. Orange looking to hold it down for just about 12 more minutes. Coach Nikki Thrasher Adams said if she got a pair of ties this weekend, she'd be happy. Against the number three team in the country, you'd certainly have to be. Here's Huff with space. Off to Achigini. Outside the 18. Cuts up a defender. Down on the ground. Ball knocked away. Back to Huff in the middle. Member of the U23 U.S. Women's National Team. Ton of national experience. Huff waiting for an option. Off to Dudley on the way. Looking to pressure forward. 5'11 freshman plays it into the middle. Knocked it away. There's Flurry right in the thick of it. Gives it off and it's booted away. Manny Syracuse has done a nice job of making sure these pressures don't turn into anything real. At the same time, though, how many more takes is it going to take for FSU to eventually capitalize on one of them? Because you're giving them so much time and opportunity in the 18-yard box to take those shots. How much longer can you sustain blocking them? 29 shots for FSU, 16 shots on goal. Here's Echigini. Pass into the middle. Looking for Olsen. Echigini trying to get it back. It's knocked away again. Hilly's got it at the midfield. Three defenders in front. Knocked to the ground. No whistle. No play on. That was a, a tough feat for Hannah Pilly to go on and receive that ball, being a 1v4 situation. If she didn't get fouled, how much longer would she have been able to hold the ball without some Syracuse help? Whoa. 
Just over 10 minutes to go. Florida State's kept the pressure on. SU defense has held up okay. Certainly had a lot of help from goalkeeper Shea Vanderbosch. She's got 14 saves today. That's a career high. Gilchrist passes it back. Over to Lauren Flynn, right back to her. Gilchrist, the sophomore out of Boulder, Colorado. Had an own goal and a big mistake in the first half as well to allow Liesl Odden's goal. FSU playing it slow. There goes Flint. And something FSU does a great job of is controlling the tempo and speed of the game. Like you're driving forward, but maintaining the ball. Odden looking to fight away. Keeps FSU out in the meantime. Dudley plays it to the right side. UI's got space. One on one with her defender. Plays it back to Gilchrist. Seminoles taking their time. Switching back to EY on the wing. She's got space. A pass in front. There's Fleury standing tall, keeping the ball away. Now for a player that's the best goal scorer on this team, she's done one heck of a job on defense. She is an incredible defender here, and there's not much you can do in that situation when you don't have anyone else on the wing to pass it to. You just got to clear it out. Huff plays it into the middle. Leilani Nesbeth over to EY on the wing. The cross. The header. Ball on the ground. Vanderbosch is there. The sophomore goalkeeper has stood tall today. Kept this Seminoles team from taking charge. We talked a bit about her stats dipping a little bit this season since last year. Being the amazing goalkeeper she was as a freshman, leading the ACC in save percentage last year. But tonight, she's totally the standout player in that. There's Dudley, lefty shot, deflected by Vanderbosch. Shea Vanderbosch has this Syracuse team on her back. It really goes to show the amount of athleticism she has and soccer IQ there in reading where that shot's gonna go. She only extended her arm too while she was diving low to, in case it went low. Ashley Roush checks back in. She's okay after that injury. Dupre comes out. Here comes the kick from EY. Into the middle. No one home, it's out of bounds. Vanderbosch has 16 saves today. She's faced 31 shots. And when it's 14 corner kicks to zero, Shea Vanderbosch leading that Syracuse Orange in those situations is truly Get one. incredible. Mer, Mer, inside of An unprecedented goalie performance from Vanderbosch today. Already led the ACC in saves. Now she's almost got 60. Ball out of bounds. This Seminoles team playing uncharacteristically in the second half. They came into this game outscoring opponents 13 to one in the final 45 minutes. Haven't played like that tonight. Only not gotten one goal back. And not to mention last year, outscoring their opponents a total of 64 to 20. Definitely uncharacteristic of FSU to not be hitting the frame right now. There's Zetchagini. The shot. She scores! What an amazing play by Echigini to take the lead for Florida State. Just like that, Syracuse trails. FSU was waiting for its best player to get on the board, and the leading scorer does what she does best. Echigini receiving the ball here, holding it until she gets right into the 18-yard box, and ripping a shot all the way into the right side of the net. I mean, there's a reason why Coach Brian Penske said that she is an 18-yard an box player. Bend, but don't break. Syracuse tried to do that as long as it possibly could. Battling injuries, obstacles, everything in between. The Orange 
really had an uphill battle in this game. Facing number three undefeated Florida State. A team that had only conceded four goals all season long. And finally, the Seminoles push forward and take the lead for the first time today. We had talked about all of FSU's opportunities in that 18-yard box. Syracuse doing the best that they can to block those shots and get it out of the box. At this point, was it bound to happen? That was Florida State's 32nd shot of the game, their 19th on net. There's only so much Shea Vanderbosch could do. We've talked about her all game long, and there's plenty of reason why. But at some point, when you've got a player like Echigini that can shoot like that, if the defender's not making the right move, then it's just bound to happen. Here come the Seminoles again, pushing it forward, up by a goal now. This SU team is in a 2-2 tie. Most of the second half, they could play the defense back, try to slow things down, but now in a deficit, style of play might have to change. Annie, is there anything this Syracuse team can do at this point when they're not really controlling possession and they're down so many players? How can they get that goal back? It's definitely difficult when you have players that are getting injured and you have players that are attempting to play these full 90 minutes with cramps and all, but you really have to try the best you can to maintain possession and not just kick it up the field because it's going to go right back to FSU possession anyways. Now Florida State can play its game. A battle of possession as it's played forward by Gilchrist. Vanderbosch boots it away. There's Nesbeth pushing it ahead. Cuts back to her left, gets a shot off. That's over the top. When Vanderbosch cleared that out there and right back into the midfield, FSU was right there on that first touch. Syracuse, even though they're outnumbered in the center of the field, you cannot let the FSU midfielders get that first touch. Another sub coming in for the Seminoles. This team, Annie, is just so deep, and they're meant to withstand a game like this. A physical battle where they can just put anyone out there, make four subs at a time, something Syracuse has no business doing. And Farkas coming in, she's a transfer from Michigan and led the team in shots with 51 last year at Michigan. She's one of those players that Brian Penske said was going to fill the shoes in the midfield once All-American Jenna Nyswanger graduated. Florida State has used the transfer portal well. They've gotten Echigini from Mississippi State after 2021. They got Taylor Huff from Tennessee. Like you mentioned, Lily Farkas from Michigan. Certainly an important thing to do in this day and age of college sports. And it's all characteristic from the program that Mark Krikorian created before he retired after 17 years in building this strong program to where the point where you're winning three national championships in a decade. Brian Penske took over after that 2021 National Championship. He was ACC Coach of the Year in 2022, right after being SEC Coach of the Year in 21 with the Tennessee Volunteers. Orange trailing by a goal, looking to at least get possession on their offensive end. Murphy on the throw. Looks for Pilly, can't get it on her foot. There's Fleury, takes command, pushing it forward. She's got room. The pass in front, there's Rupert. To her right side, looking for space, now double teamed. Orange lose the ball and the Seminoles push it away. The idea on that play was there. You have Flurry going with that counterattack and playing it out wide. It just did not execute well. Three on one for the Seminoles. Three Syracuse defenders in the way. Back in FSU territory, right where Florida State wants to be, up by a goal, looking to move to seven and zero this season. FSU has been so dominant in the ACC, looking for yet another victory. 
The Seminoles have finished no lower than second place in the ACC 14 out of the last 18 years. Just goes to show how strong this program is at the moment. And also looking at Syracuse, it's, this game is very characteristic to what they looked like last year in terms of playing very defensively minded against ranked opponents, but ending up keeping the game very close. It just comes to a matter of, are you willing to risk that many goal opportunities and getting the ball up the field if you're playing so defensively? Leah Pace down on the ground as we approach just over a minute left in this second half. Like you mentioned, Annie, this game does look a lot like some of those ranked matchups from last year. Number two, Virginia being one of them, the last big tie for SU. The Orange just couldn't hold on long enough today. A big goal for SU last season was to keep ranked opponent matchups close as well as stay healthy, and that goal has not changed into this year. Well, with all the obstacles in their path, only suiting up 14 or 15 players today, Losing Kendall Lawher to injury. Some cramps along the way. Anna Rupert, Aaron Fleury, Ashley Roush all having to come out of the game. Syracuse has still managed to keep it a one goal game and kept it tied for a long time. Extremely impressed of this Syracuse squad tonight in giving it their all and also capitalizing on mistakes because no matter how good of a team you are, you're going to make mistakes. And it's whether or not your opponents are going to capitalize on it. Now Shea Vanderbosch held on as long as she could without making those mistakes. 16 saves for the sophomore, but it was Oni Echigini, the leading scorer on this Florida State squad who eventually got goal number three for FSU. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Well, that does it. The Seminoles come into Syracuse. They barge down the door. The Orange kept it close, but couldn't hold on for long. 3-2 FSU on top. SU fought as hard as it could, Annie. 